Count money, man. Money, Stack man. riches. Try, try, and told, try and told him I'm a beast, bud. What's up, gang? Welcome gang? to the Grindcast. Simon, Simon Arias, Arias here. here. Get, Get ready. It's, ready. A, new it's a new day. What's up? And welcome back to another episode of the Grindcast. Get ready. It's a new day. Uh, and we have two very, very special, special guests, uh, friends of mine, mentor of mine, Coach uh, Jim Tressel, President Tressel, uh, now President at Youngstown State, and Ryan Shazier, uh, formerly, uh, currently formerly of, of uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers and uh, former Ohio State Buckeye, first round draft pick. And unbelievable husband and father and friend and just uh, it, it, for those of you that haven't met Ryan, uh, what I could tell you is his character uh, on the inside, who he is on the inside, is is even sweeter and better sure. than what you saw him do on on the football field. And I could speak that from from experience. So I'm excited to uh, expose those uh, those two great young men uh, to, to, <laughs> to, to to all of you OG. to OG. And we're gonna talk about transitions right. today right. Tra right. transitions and so uh, age before beauty ryan let's 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 go to coach uh first and and sorry i always call you coach but uh maybe maybe uh you, you could talk a little bit uh about your transition from uh where you were going into youngstown state for the first time as as a head coach and and how that transition looked to going from uh not being a d1 double a uh, head football coach to uh, I think a one and nine program to a, a, one of the best probably runs that a lot of teams at that level have ever gone on uh, winning multiple national championships uh, in a row uh, do you want to maybe start there sure you know and, and I think for our listeners and viewers and so forth transition is constant uh, we always said that uh, the only thing constant is change mm -hmm. and that uh, we have to be ready Many times we are preparing and we want the change that's happening. And then there are other times when change occurs that we weren't counting on, mm -hmm. that we were, you know, never dreamed would happen. Um, and, and so there are certain fundamentals we've got to follow, whether it's the transitions and change that happened that were part of our plan and those that weren't. And... You know, that preparation thing is, is so important. And I thought about it when you were introducing Ryan and talking about, the, you know, he's a husband and father and great football player. But the biggest blessing he had was his parents because they prepared him and they had a, a, an environment where he could grow and be prepared for anything that might happen in his life. And when you're a parent... If you can do that and you can have your child ready to handle anything. Anything. Because you don't know what's coming. Can't control it all the time. Can't control it. And and so that preparation begins, I think, with having a solid foundation in what you think is important. You know, something that you can always go back to. Yep. You know, whenever a season goes bad for a while, what do you do? You go back to fundamentals. Yep. Right? Yep. I mean that that's what you do. Yep. Like, man, we're not tackling or we're you know, we're not blocking or right. Right. We're making poor play calls or whatever. You always go back in business, I'm sure. You go back to the fundamentals. And you, so you taught me that. Is that right? You taught me that. Any any time anything goes off in life, you know, be it any part of your life, you go back to the looking at the, the fundamentals, going back to the fundamentals. And I know you mentioned that on on uh one of the years where you didn't have a great year of, of mm -hmm. uh, you know, at Youngstown State, and then you came back the next year, I think, and yep. won a national championship. And what you found is that you got off the fundamentals. Is, yeah, that's is right. that right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that's what Ryan's parents taught him was that there are certain foundational fundamentals that you need to, to grow in, and be ready in your life. And the real magic is what you guys do, and you and Perm are, you know, up at five in the morning and you, you do the fundamentals of things and you get the grind cast going and, and you send all those fundamental messages out from the locker room, you know, to your team and so forth, because we've got to constantly work on those fundamentals so that we're prepared for whatever happens. Yep. And then of course there are those transition moments. Mm -hmm. So he goes from being a high school player to a college player. That's a transition. Mm -hmm. He goes from a college player to being a pro. There's a transition. He now is going to be going from a 
pro player to a businessman. Boom. That's a transition. You know, you go from being a single person to perhaps married. Yeah. For, you know, you go from not having any children to having children. There are transitions, and the only way, in my opinion, we can prepare ourselves for that is to have that foundation that you're constantly working on, and when it gets a little rough, you really go back mm. and you think about those foundational things. No doubt. And it's kind of it's kind of hard to back up Coach Tressel. <laughs> I, and I still say Coach also, but uh, yeah, my, my, my parents, they definitely laid a strong foundation for me. I even have them tattooed on me as uh, faith, integrity, and discipline. So I try to, you know, live my life through those three principles and teach my kids the same things. But uh, you, you're, you're completely right, Coach. Well, you know, you know, it's interesting. So let's think about both ways of transitioning, the ones that we hope for and the ones that mm -hmm. we didn't hope for, yeah. okay? So how do we get really good along the path that we're planning is we work hard. Yep. You know, we read. You know, you, you become a big reader. Yep. You study. You get mentors. You learn from one another. You evaluate your experiences. You progress. You evaluate yourself. You know, every day, if you rec recall at Ohio State, we graded you guys every practice, right? Every, every practice. You know, so because we wanted to go where we were going. Now let's take the time where we're transitioning and we didn't plan for that. Well, we go back and we work on our fundamentals and then we say, okay, we got to write a new plan. And then we've got to go do the things that it takes to execute that plan. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about that? Um, you know, the, 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 the come up at Youngstown state, you know, people see that, that, that know the story that know that if you're not a football fan, you know, what, what coach Jim Trestle brought to Youngstown state was never done before. I, I, I was lucky. I grew up watching champions so so i kind of oh, yeah. i i wanted to win a state championship i i, I watched sure. winning happen a lot so it's like i wanted to win it was it was part of our culture and, and youngstown is a football town boxing fighting hard-nosed town football town and you know before the national championship came you know there was you coming in a from a transition there as a, as a new coach and so then then you won some titles but maybe can you hone in on what you were just talking about what, what was that moment between you won a title or two and then you had a a year that wasn't uh that you didn't win a title and it wasn't the greatest year where we talked about you started to come back and look at the fundamentals how did you transition back into being a, a national champ from already being there what what went wrong do you think uh because we've talked about it before yeah. you know i think timing is so important with everything yep. and and so when we got to Youngstown State, we had goals in mind, and we put a plan together, and we slowly progressed toward it. And it took us five years before we were national champions. Then we got on a run. We were play, played for four straight, which is it's tough to sustain. Five years first. It took five years to win the first To one. win your first yeah, one. We got into the playoffs a couple times and advanced a couple times, but you have to learn. Mm -hmm. What was your first year? What was the record of first year? Come on, year? man. It was Come two on. and nine. Come on. Two Come and on. nine. Two two nine. Got two two and nine. Up. They always bring up, they always stuff. Bring up that stuff, don't they? Because <laughs> pe people, see, people see that you're a, you're a Hall of Fame college football Definitely. coach. And you're in the College Football Hall of Fame as a coach. and and But people forget that the first season was 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 two and nine yeah. and so there's a message there in transition oh there's, of, no, there's yeah. when you first get started in something people see the national championships hanging but they don't see you know did you give up after going two and nine did did, mm -hmm. did you think that you made the wrong decision did, did you ever think that what keeps you going in that mm -hmm. process when you go two and nine because a lot of people probably started their first year as a coach better than two and nine but not many people finished their their career with what you have been able to accomplish so i think that's a mental transition and, you know and i think we don't want to confuse transitions mm -hmm. with journeys mm -hmm. okay so when you're having that journey toward your carrying out your plan and you're progressing, that's one thing. And then when adversity strikes or do I have to break out my Latin in my pocket? Okay. Yeah. I got a little Latin in my pocket yeah. for the viewers. Did you get a picture of this already, Ron? Yeah, I already got a picture. Okay. Got a picture. Can you share it with me? 
Per Angusta ad Augusta, through difficulties to greatness. And so in that, in that journey, you're going to have difficulties. Yep. I mean, that, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. But we were able to continue the journey, okay? There are some times, though, when the journey has to change. And that's what I would call transition. Yeah. You know, there's the journey, and, and we did have that long journey of it took five years. We were getting better all the time, got on a roll, then took a fall. Our evaluation was, you know what? We lost our focus on the fundamentals, so we got back on to the journey and back to the national championship. Uh, that's one thing that we all have to face is, is how do you – how do you pass the test of time? Our guy Tristan was talking about, huh? You know, excellence, consistency, greatness. Test of greatness. Test of greatness is And the hallmark of excellence. But the other topic we wanted to talk about, because he and I have both had very visible transitions, coach to president, player to businessman, mm. you know, and that's a different thing than a journey. As soon as you start the transition, now you're on the journey. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Transition, yeah. then the journey. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Again. Yeah. 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 But, but, Ryan, you know, I think something that a lot of people could benefit f from you um, is, is I've, I've had friends that went to big-time college football programs, yeah. and I've watched how uh, some of them have slipped in that transition. Yeah. You know, of so what are – you know, we were talking about Ohio State any given day. If there's if there's class, you know, going on there, there's over a hundred thousand yeah. people or something there in, in, in a day, right, yeah. right there. In in let alone the stadium. Yeah. And so you're an 18 year old kid, you coming in, and now you're in the shoe, and and there's a hundred thousand fans, and there's a hundred thousand people every day on campus, and and so you go from just a young kid to like, uh, you know, that's their version of that's a professional team to them, and, and that that's their that's their that's, their, that's what they do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like Pittsburgh Steelers here. Yeah. I mean, it's the, so what is that transition like coming from a high school kid into a big time program? And how would people that are making that transition now, uh, maybe there's a young kid out there playing high school football, getting ready to transition to, to play big time football. What things do you think you can give them? What wisdom could you give them on how to not mess up that transition and, and make the best out of it? So to me, everybody's situation is a little bit different. I kind of grew up in a decent sized city, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's not the biggest, but it's not the smallest. Right. You know, and um, one thing I always told myself is I, wa I want to go to a big time university. And the thing is, before I went to Ohio State, I was going to go to Florida. I was committed to Florida for like three years, the whole time. And uh, it was crazy because, you know, Coach Meyer resigned and then I opened up my recruitment again. And then I went to go see Coach Trussell and then I went to LSU. When I went to Ohio State, I was like, man, this place is, this is a real city, but this, this whole state is behind the city. Yeah. Like you, could, you get the feel of that the moment you get on campus. And when I went to LSU and in, 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 uh, Florida, the, the cities, the states are behind them, but it's, it's more like country or, it's, it, you know, it's, it's smaller cities. Baton Rouge is the capital, but it's still a smaller city. Yep. We went and, last year. Yep. And Gainesville, and Gainesville is, is, is small. small. Yeah, it's small, small, you know. So, yeah. so uh, it, it, in Florida, you're competing for three different schools. In Ohio State, you know, I know Youngstown, you know, y'all the big dogs in, in Youngstown, but Ohio State is – that's is they're bigger than the protein. Well, you know what's cool about Ohio State here is everyone has their favorite uh, team in the state. Maybe they went to Youngstown State, mm -hmm. Bowling Green, OU, Miami, Baldwin, Wallace. It doesn't matter. But everyone's a Buckeye fan, yeah. regardless of, of where yeah, you yeah, went. Yeah, yeah, you're a Buckeye fan right. as well. Yeah, no so, question. That's and, an advantage, and, and that's and that's what I loved about Ohio. <laughs> so when I transitioned there, me and my dad talked and. Um, and we was like, Ryan, because I played, I actually played defense and end in high school. And obviously I'm not the biggest guy, but I played defense and end and I transitioned to a linebacker. So me and my dad talked and we thought, hey, Ryan, the best thing for you is probably to go to college in January because then that allows you the opportunity to get a step ahead of everybody else coming in. Because learning a, a new position and then playing in two, two months, like, because we would have been going in June or July, 
then we're playing in August. So he was teasing me for being two and nine back when I first started. Yeah. You know how much he weighed when he got to Ohio State? <laughs> one ninety. No, yeah, I, what? I was one ninety eight. No, you weren't. <laughs> yeah, I was one ninety eight. <laughs> he was he was one sixty eight. Oh, <laughs> oh, I wasn't one sixty eight. No. You, you were. Perm, when's the last was, time you were one sixty eight? No, Bob, when I, I was no, six. I wasn't, no, I wasn't. <laughs> I, def I definitely wasn't 200 pounds. He wasn't 200 pounds. There he is going oh. to play linebacker. Linebacker yeah. at the Ohio State yeah. University. Not even 200 pounds. Yeah, yeah. I, was, yeah, I wasn't even 200 pounds. Oh. So <laughs> me and my dad was like, hey, first of all, if I go in January, it gives me time to under get acclimated in the system to learn, to learn linebacker, the position, because I never played it. And then also, you know, gain weight. But it, this is what people don't know. When you're a freshman going in, in January, it's totally different if you're a freshman going in in June. Mm -hmm. A freshman going in June, you're kind of eased into it. And, <laughs> yeah, and right. like you're not right. taking, you're not, you're taking hard classes, but you know, you're, you know, it's, a, it's only freshmen there. It's only athletes there. In January, I came from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It was 75 degrees when I got there, mm. when I left. I landed yeah. in Columbus. It was <laughs> negative 10. Crazy you cold. About, That's I, a transition. transition. <laughs> I transitioned the moment I got off the plane. You know, I I got I, I went on the shorts. plane with a sh with shorts because <laughs> you know when you're young you don't check the weather. Oh. So I was I had like a long sleeve shirt on, some shorts. I literally got off the plane. We went through the jetway, and I was like, "Whoa!" I got my bag in the airport, took clothes out, and like I have to put my clothes on now. Yeah, you know, and and but it, it really helped me get acclimated of being away from my family but also transition to learning a new a new role and i love the fact that i got thrown into the fire because it allowed me to learn a new city it allowed me to get away from my family and allow me to transition. How did you transition in that? I, I think that's a big part of just being away oh, from man. home oh, as a yeah, kid. You know, you're yeah. homesick. Yeah. You know, yeah, no, how, how, how do you how did you get over that? Let, let's say somebody can't come in January so, uh, yeah, and they come. So you they know, come, how, what they, advice do you give them to transition so into college? One thing that I did and 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 I've always been really good at is just socializing with people, getting to know people and networking and things like that. And I and I feel like that's one thing that people should constantly work on. It doesn't matter if you're five years old. Well, five year old, you need to not network as much. Probably when you're like fifteen, <laughs> you know. But like if you're a young kid or you're an adult, it doesn't like the the more relationships you build. It, it, I'm not trying to say it helps you down the road, but it does because it does. it it doesn't matter what what kind of relationships you get into. You I, I, you kind of always have somebody to lean on. Yep. And when I went up north. The people I, the only people I knew were my teammates and my coaches. So that gave me time to lean on them. Just like these are the people I'm actually getting to know. I have to, I have to actually get to know them. If I went to Florida or Miami, if I was feeling uncomfortable, I'm going home. Mm -hmm. It was no going home. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Was, you're getting on a two hour flight, right. and my parents didn't have the funds to just like, hey, Ryan, you're yeah. coming back and forth. Yeah. So if it was a Thanksgiving or my teammates going home. I'm going with them. You know, I'm getting to spend time with their family. If if I was like, Mom, I'm homesick, you know, she's like, Hey, you're gonna have to grind it out. You know, like you want to go that far, hey, mm -hmm. it, it's gonna it's gonna adjust you for when you get away. And you know, every kid feels like, hey, they're gonna go to the NFL. And I always felt like I was gonna go to the NFL from the moment I got in high school. And me and my dad talked about this also. It was like, hey, Ryan, if you go to Florida when it's December, it's gonna be freezing. No, when it's December in Florida, it's gonna be coldest as fifty. I was like, hey, if you go to if you go to Ohio in December, it's gonna be in the teens or it's gonna be below zero. So if you go to a cold weather team when you get drafted, you're gonna be able to adjust already. So getting drafted, wow, getting, talk about preparation. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. getting drafted from Columbus to Pittsburgh, it was like, hey, I'm used to Midwest weather. Yeah, you know, but. If I, I I have a lot of teammates that go from getting drafted from Miami or South Florida or Georgia, then coming up here, when the winter comes, they're like, man, I don't want to play football. I don't I don't want to be here in the winter. A lot of guys are like, man, it's too cold up here. That's that's why they go home so fast. Man, me and Michelle, when the, when the season's over, we're like, hey, we can chill. We don't have no reason to rush. If we want to go somewhere, we can go somewhere. But that transition allowed us and that preparation allowed us to – Hey, we can move. We want to move. We're not allowing something else to adjust how I move. You yeah, know? and I, I really feel like that th those transitions in college really allow me to be able to move more as a person and grow as a person and be able to be away from my family, while other people, you know, 
all they know is their family and it, it doesn't allow them to get out so like even when it came to my wife she's from san antonio it's, it was a lot harder for her to transition here than mm -hmm. me because she got thrown into the fire like i was in college and it took me, I was there three and a half years, and then I was in Pittsburgh, this is six, seven years now, so it's 10 years. My wife only been here for like four and a half years, so I still have six years on her. Yeah. So it's, it's still, she's still transitioning. And you had a team. Yeah, and a yeah. team, and yeah. she didn't have a yeah. team. So How was your first hit when you got hit in the cold? So How was the first? So the thing is, since I came early, I kind of got weaved into it, yeah. and then um, in Ohio, with in up north in the spring it's still cold yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. so we had spring ball right. and sometimes in spring ball it's 30 degrees when it's supposed to be essentially early yeah, yeah. it's supposed yeah. to be 65 so that that you know that uh that spring ball I'm playing it kind of like the first few games I'm like man this this is sucks like I, it hurts everything you hurts. do hurts wow. when you catch a football it's like you're throwing a rock at somebody <laughs> yeah. no yeah. doubt so it it, it, it hurts but, yeah. but it, it but it really helped me because when we had guys that when we had younger guys and we actually played in November or we played in October and it started getting cold in them, they're like, man, I don't want to play in this, but I already had a spring playing in that weather, even though it wasn't technically part of the season. We're still we're still tackling, we're still hitting each other, so my body is already kind of adjusted. What was that transition like coming from uh, Ohio State to? playing professional football and drafted in the first round first so round. so uh me, me i always tell um, my friends i had a joke uh i, I told i told myself hey I, I have a thousand days at ohio state so if people don't know it's 360 days in a year 365 365 times three is kind of close to a yeah, thousand days th right <laughs> you know so i told myself i'm gonna be there in three years you know, and obviously, if, if I didn't play as well, I would have been longer. But I, I was like, I'm grinding it out, grind cast. I'm grinding it out. Mm. You know, and um, and I think being at Ohio State really helped the transition of going to somewhere else because Ohio State is unlike most big schools. A lot of other big schools are down south. You know, don't have super cold weather. Ohio State, Notre Dame. You know, the team up north. You know, they're 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 big schools, but they're not Ohio State. You know, and and Ohio State is like a SEC school up north. That's that's what I like to say. So I was going against competition that was NFL caliber all the time, but we always had the faster team. So it was like I'm if I'm if I'm gonna be fast, I'm competing against my teammates, they're fast too. That helped me out a lot. And then having a a hundred thousand students on campus every day, then having the whole state watch you as if you're a pro team every game. It really is like, hey. Helped your transition. Yeah, going to the NFL is like, hey, I'm, I'm in college. It's like, this right. is how college was. Right. I just, I don't have as much guidance over us. Like, I don't, every time we do any, something, you have more guidance when it comes to college. But when you get to the NFL, it's like, hey. It's all you. I, I, I'm, we, I already experienced What did it feel stuff. like the day that they called your uh, name at the draft? You mm -hmm. went first round. Yeah. I was waiting for them to call my name. They never <laughs> called it. They called yours. Hey, no, nah, so that, that was an amazing feeling. That was an amazing feeling because um, um, I remember I had got hurt uh, around the time when the combines came and I pulled my hamstring. And I ended up running a 4-3. So I, I thought I was going to go from – I was I thought I was gonna go with second round at first, but then when I ran the four three, I was like, teams love speed, so I'm gonna get drafted in the first. Sorry about that. And um when it it was just an amazing experience because when they said, Hey Ryan, we wanna invite you to the draft because we think you will be one of the uh people drafted in the first or second round. So I was like, Yeah, I love to go. It's it's an honor just to be one of the people right. selected. It's over yeah. three hundred people and you know, it's only twenty people that they say, Hey, come to the draft. And the thing that was so funny is at the draft, I had uh, took my shoes off because I was because, you know, everybody's trying to look fly. I had the best <laughs> stuff on and I had I had bought some shoes, but it was too small. Oh, Ooh. yeah. So I, I took my shoes off and I was walking around the draft with like, obviously, we're in the green room. So people don't really look at your feet. Right. So I had socks on, but I was like walking around the draft room because I was back there for about an hour with my shoes off because I was like. We got Clowney, you know, they, you know, they had, uh, my draft class was a really stock draft class. So 
it was Clowney, Khalil Mack, and all those guys. And I was like, man, I feel like I'm just as good as these guys, but they they have the you know they had the pedigree. They're they're big. They're, yeah. You know, Clowney's six six, runs a four five or something like that. Like, obviously, I'm not that big, you know. But I was like, hey, I'm probably gonna go around fifteen or later. I was just being realistic with myself. And so I took my shoes off, and I was like, around the 14th pick, I was like, hey, all right, this is around the time I'm about to get drafted. So my phone ring, you no, know, my agent phone ring. So boom, somebody called him. He was like, hey, Ryan, you're about to get drafted. And it was the Dallas Cowboys, and they had the 16th pick. So he's like, Ryan, the Cowboys are about to draft you with the next pick. So it was the 14th pick. The Bears had to just draft it. So they, my agent's on the phone. Then the 15th pick, the phone at the draft rings. And no, no, my phone ring. And then I see a 412 number. So I was like, 412? And the thing is, the only reason I knew a 412 number was Pittsburgh is because I had two teammates on my team, three, uh, three teammates on my team. Jordan Hall, he's from Pennsylvania. And Jeanette, they're like Greensburg, so they can have 412 or 724. So, and then I had a dude on my team named Pitt Brown, then, you know, Terrell. So I seen 412, I'm like, man, that's Pittsburgh. Like, I'm about to answer this. Yeah. I answered it, Coach Chuck, and then Coach uh, Tomlin was like, hey, uh, hey, Ryan, uh, do you want to be? No, it was, it was, yeah, it was Coach, uh, uh, Coach Tomlin. He was like, hey, Ryan, do you want to be a Steeler? Uh -huh. I was like, hell yeah. I, be a <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hell yeah, I want to be a Steeler. And then, you know, Mr. Rooney got on, and then uh, Dick LeBeau got on. He was like, Hey, what's up, Buckeye? You know, and it, it was just a, it was a really cool moment because, you know, every kid dreams to get drafted oh. in the first round. And then, and it was super cool because my dad, we used to watch a lot of football and I was kind of like a bandwagon fan. And, but we liked the Steelers because they always had really good defense. And my dad was a defensive coordinator in high school. So we liked the Steelers. So, but my, my uncle, who was at the draft also, was a huge Cowboys fan. Oh. So, like, my dad texted him, like, hey, Ryan's going to the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> so, then, when the Steelers drafted, he was like, man, what you talking I, th I thought you was going to the Cowboys. But it was just like, there was one to pick too late, and, and the rest is history. And I'm, I'm, I think this is the best thing that ever happened. What, 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 one more question. For for you, because I gotta know when, when you. I, I, I mean, I, if we could we could cut this out if you don't want to say it, but I gotta ask. Okay, when you when when you got drafted in the first round, there's 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 something there's currency that comes with that. If yeah. you, you you get paid yeah. for being drafted in the first round, yeah. millions of dollars, hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand no, dollars, yeah, sure. times how many? <laughs> You know, millions of dollars. Yeah. This is public information, yeah. so I know it's millions of dollars. Yeah. So you go from Ohio State. You went from not being able to fly home when you get homesick yeah. to you answer the phone and now it's like whoop, millions of dollars. Yeah. How long did it take for like the first big sum of money to get ACH into your bank account? So like no, was it a month? Was it six months? So it's it's a little bit. It's almost like a month because you have to you have to uh, sign you know sign the deal with the team. So you have to really sign a contract. It yeah. You're not gonna get your money until you sign a contract. But your your agents negotiating with the team also because. Um, most teams, you have guaranteed money in your contract. In first round draft picks, from all the way from like pick one to like twenty five or something like that, your whole first round contract is guaranteed. Like once your choice of later is like eighty percent or something like that. Um, and and so, a signing bonus. Yeah, but yeah, but and a signing bonus. But uh, but the first round draft picks is slated. So it's just you don't you don't really need an agent when you're yeah when you're it's, a it, it is what it is when you're a rookie yeah yeah now now what is ACH'd like automatic okay put into your account I mean yeah. like did <laughs> oh, you like know what ACH like, like, man I, I, like, I thought it was direct deposit yeah yeah, right. that, that, yeah. yeah that's what it is I guess. but what's ACH I don't you, know you made that up yeah, I, I made it up made that up we made up ACH ACH what is that what that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he knew what I was talking hey, about. I knew what you were talking about. But I I'm from talking, Youngstown, Ohio. I, I thought it was direct deposit. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what he was talking about. <laughs> ACH. Show him your picture. Show oh, him your yeah. shirt, Perm. Yeah, he, here, here's his shirt. I I be, show the I, camera. Yeah, let's, let's, let me stand up here. I want to be like Jim. It's a, it's a <laughs> picture of uh, Coach's there you go. Right there. face, yeah. like, a, like, like a cartoon right, character let, says, I want to be let, like let's get back. Jim. Let's get back on thing yeah. because here's, here's the two lessons I learned. Yep. As I listened to his, his transitions, changes, journey, whatever you want to call it, is yeah. what a blessing to have that parental yeah. Yeah. 
foundation. Mm-hmm. And and so as the first list- thing you ever said to me before we were going to do the one event here where you said, I think I might be able to grab a couple friends to help mm-hmm. with, with your event for the kids. Mm-hmm. When you started to tell me about Ryan, the first thing you told me about him was how highly you thought of his dad and his mom That's his right. his, yeah. his parents the first thing yeah. i ever knew yeah. about you but but to me the message for the for the listeners viewers the world mm-hmm. is parenting is so critical. so critical critical you know and we hear about all these issues that are critical and i don't think we hear enough about parenting yep. that's mm. just me mm. and the second thing as i listened to ryan talking about journeys transitions and so forth is you need to have those experiences. Yeah, you had true. to figure out that it's not impossible true. to play in the cold. Yeah. It's not impossible to be away from home. Mm-hmm. It's not impossible to, you know, to adjust and, and to, to put on some weight so that you can compete and, and all. So that preparation, those experiences. Uh, and, and so let's say now we're shifting. Okay, I'm not coaching anymore. He's moving to be a businessman, you know, and... and now we've got to go and get some of those experiences. Oh. You know, we have to learn about where we're, you know. Mm. So we can't be afraid of the transition, just like when he got on the plane to come to Ohio State. If he was afraid, right. he couldn't have made the transition. At all. Well, if, if you're starting a new journey, you know, it's... You go from it's normal being, to be a little bit nervous. Oh yeah, of that. Oh, yeah. But well, even even maybe even a little. But you just do it anyway. Right. I was gonna say, isn't that what they say? Courage is is you know it's it's not being, the absence being of fear. Afraid, yeah, but just being willing to go ahead. Yes. And so, being willing to go do it, and then go figure out what's it going to take to be a college president. I got to go. I got to go learn about how do you do that. Yeah. You yeah. know, what's it take to start a business? What's it take to start a podcast? What's it take to you know, what a transition for you to go from coaching 10 years at, at Ohio State, playing, uh, think coach for three national championships, one, 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 uh, it, to, to being a president of a university where before that you weren't doing anything like that. So, that, I mean, that is an interesting wow. transition. Wow. You, you talk about somebody that, it's, it's like somebody that played basketball going to play professional football and then doing it at a high level it, it, on, on the back end you know it's like that's a major you don't see many coaches i think you told me that there you know when when you looked up someone maybe he was in washington or there was yeah, only so, one other yeah. person that was a uh a, a, a president that wasn't through the education system or, mm-hmm. or, or something like that so very rare transition to to find yourself in how did you how did you you know what lessons can people learn from your transition well I spent 37 years coaching. Um, then all of a sudden, I spent two years as a vice president, which was like training camp. It was like, you know, the University of Akron, Dr. Proenza said, hey, why don't you come here? You've been in higher education in the coaching world, but I really think that you would enjoy going in the administrative level. I thought, well, I'm going to check that out. Just like you're going to check out maybe – some businesses or you're going to mm-hmm. check out a podcast or you know i'm gonna check that out i'm gonna figure out how to get good at it so i spent two years as a vice president studying the world of higher education reading everything i could read picking the brain going and talking to everybody um just trying to absorb as much information as i could not with necessarily the goal of being a president but hey i'm in this arena now mm-hmm. and you know Whatever arena I'm in, I'm going to be the best That's I can right. be in that arena. And it ended up, after two years, timing. We always talk about timing. Timing happened. All of a sudden, the presidency at Youngstown State's open. I had familiarity there. Part of being a president is being able to raise some money. Well, I knew a lot of the people that had some money, so it helped me at least get a conversation. Um, and... Still, though, when you go from being a vice president to a president, that's a transition. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different world. Mm -hmm. So you just study the heck out of it. But let me say this that I think is is maybe if on one end parenting's the most important thing, what I think is the most important thing on the other end is ultimately, whether it's the journey or a transition that's a hard one that you didn't count on, you better believe you can do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to make the NFL – 
You don't believe just by lifting weights and playing some high school and playing some college, you've got to believe you can do that. Mm -hmm. You have to. You're not going to win the national championship as a team until you believe you can do that. Now, it doesn't mean you don't have to do the things necessary, but you can do all those things to prepare for success. But if you don't believe it, Never work. it won't happen. That's yeah. right. It's not going to happen. And so, you know, for our viewers, listeners, and so forth, you're going to have journeys. That's, that's life. you got to figure out how you can be the best. You're going to have things that happen that you didn't count on, that you didn't plan for. Mm -hmm. you got to have the courage to transition. But ultimately, you have to believe in yourself. Yeah. Belief. You have to believe. And it sure helps at the front end if you had parents who gave you every reason to believe in yourself and trained you up with the fundamentals. One of the things you helped me with my perspective on, uh, talking about transition that, that I think people would find value in, is, you know, we talked about, you know, you leaving Ohio State after 10 years. Uh, I think it was 10, 10 years. And it, and, and it wasn't uh, a plan, something that maybe was planned. You, you didn't see it coming, you know, no, two years no. before that. It, it, and and uh, so I don't know if you could speak on that or, or, or not. But what I know we can grab from that is you told me when I asked you, you know, how did you handle that adversity? Mm -hmm. And you said uh, adversity compares to what? Compares to uh, a kid you know, right now somewhere that doesn't have a good home to, to, to live in or or you started to compare it to people that had it worse mm -hmm. and, and your perspective on the way that you looked at that thing that happened, that moment of time, that was that was adversity. It, it was adversity. But your perspective of how you digested that adversity mentally of. I'm blessed that I was there for 10 years. Right. I'm happy. I had a great experience. We accomplished a lot of great things. And and I still got a good offensive line around me. I got people around me that that mm -hmm. that, that are in my corner. But my perspective was uh, that a lot of other people have it worse. So I got I to gotta check myself to say I'm grateful for this experience. And there's a lot of people that got it worse. And I've pulled from that. I, I, I've learned a lot from that when I've had adverse situations come up I, i've went back to yeah hard this is an obstacle but compares to what you know some sometimes your adversity is another person's dream mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You your your adversity coming out of uh, of Ohio State, yeah. But somebody's dream was to, can can I coach their people? Can, yeah. You can't coach ten years, period, at, at that level. It's so hard to 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 keep a job at, at the, because the expectations are so high. Let alone do that. So the perspective of yeah, but I but I got to do this, and that's a lot of people's dream. And I got to play in the NFL, and 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 that's uh, that's a lot of people's you know dream. And so that goes back to that old saying that it's impossible. To be grateful and unhappy at the same, same time. time. Mm. So, which are you? You know, like you said, I got 10 years at Ohio State. How many people get that? Right. So, I'm either going to be grateful or unhappy. Some people, That's a decision. How many people get to play in the NFL? Not, huh? not a lot. Some, not people, a lot. some people can't even coach a little league, coach. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, so. <laughs> but I think that's a decision. That's a decision. When you're facing that moment of transition, that's a decision. Right. You got to decide how you're going to look at it. now. How you're going to view it? Yeah, it doesn't make it easy. Doesn't mean it's without pain, and without you know. I mean, how hard was all this PT you've been doing? Huh? Hey man, I mean, you know, you, you can't even imagine. But like you said, adversity is in to uh, adversity is depend on the person. You know, yeah. some people don't. Uh, some of our listeners. It don't not all of them listen or, or watch football right. you know what i mean so you know if, if some what's of our wrong, listeners what's wrong with you oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> what's wrong? talk about what's wrong, what's wrong with you i'll probably lose half of the listeners <laughs> no, now no, but, no, no, but, no. but 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 uh but uh, ryan just we just had a transition in our relationship yeah. he just oh. found out that I was a Browns fan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Recently. <laughs> yeah, I just did you. Oh, he was Did so you just disappointed. find out? Just, he was just, so disappointed oh, in me. I'm a his I'm wife, a, his, wife his wife Michelle, I I I you know, I should have gave her a heads up <laughs> because I know it's a lot to take in at one time, but I had I was talking to a pastor. How do you feel about him now? Next to me and I was yeah. just getting ready to introduce yeah, the know. pastors to cuz they were Ohio State fans and they wanted Still to meet Brian and Michelle and I was talking I was getting ready to introduce them and and his wife was so shocked. 
that I was a Browns fan that she started swearing at me because we got that we got that relationship already. You know what I mean? She 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 got it. She's a little firecracker. She started swearing. She couldn't believe it. You know what I mean? And 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 then later he left. I, I got to tell her. I said, you know that was a pastor. <laughs> that you, but they were so disappointed in me. And my wife was chiming in. She's a Steelers fan. I was getting so that was a that was a, a transition. But Ryan, um, you know, do, do you? You were in the league for a few years. You were drafted in the first round. You played at a high level. You were a starter. You were leading, you know, leading your team. And, you know, people may not know even – not everyone may know exactly what happened, you know, to you. What, uh, how are you transitioning into business? Why are you transitioning into doing other things in, in, in business? Uh, what happened? You know, do you, do you – can you tell us about, you know, that what that was like, transitioning out of – the NFL, what happened, what that moment was like? Um, so, you know, uh, the people that don't know, I ended up having a spinal cord injury in a football game in 2017. Uh, the thing is, with spinal cord injuries, that is not common at all in football. Not and, common? And, not at all. At all. No, not at all. So, uh, the, I think people, I mean, spinal cord injuries happen every year about, uh, for instance, in the Pennsylvania area, almost like 1700 people get a spinal cord injury you know and, and around the car uh, accidents and yeah, car accidents yeah. and all type of things like that but typically you don't get spinal cord injuries playing playing football um but when i got a spinal cord injury i got paralyzed from waist down and you know i've just been rehabbing every single day uh since then and, but that play was that there was i remember you telling me it was like a routine play like yeah, it was, it was not a major no, not, if, if you watch football yeah. or if you don't even watch football you look at a tackle and you're like whoa that's not that's not that bad of a hit it's not a bad hit it's a it's like a regular tackle that i would yeah, that was not one of those woo yeah, you know it was, it was, it was no. just a regular tackle yeah. and i made that tackle over a thousand times yeah. a thousand times and um you know it was just uh, and what did, what happened what did you fi did you know at that point, yeah, no, I was you weren't getting like how fast did you realize, oh, uh, shit, I can't walk? Yeah, like immediately, you know, uh, I hit the guy, and then normally when you tackle somebody, you can like drop your legs, and when I hit him, it just I, I just dropped to the floor, you know, and um, and it was just it was just super unfortunate, you know, uh, and it was it was just you know, a lot of times when it comes to sports, you you don't expect people to get hurt when you let me say this. Football is a hundred percent injury rate. It doesn't matter what you play, like what position you play. Somebody's you're going to get hurt. You, you can if you break your pinky, that's considered hurt. You you spring you're going to get it. You're going to get hurt. Yeah, you know. But nobody think of it that that severity. But uh, um, when when that happened, it was just I was like, man, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened. And when crazy things happen to people. Most of the time, and I'm just being honest, you don't see it happening to one of the best players that's playing the game either. You know, if, obviously you don't want anybody to get hurt, right. but if somebody's the best guy on the field, you you rarely see that guy as the guy that's hurt. That guy is the guy that normally keeps up with himself so he can keep playing. You know, and what do you mean by that? Um, the best guy on the field like, keeps so, up with himself so they so can start playing. Most, most of the like, and Coach Trussell might notice most of the the best players. A lot of times, especially when it comes to NFL, they do a lot of rehab. They do a lot of they, they eat right. They, There's a reason why they're the best. Yeah, they're yeah. doing these things. They're doing they're doing they're doing these things to be the best. And and normally, you know, uh, guys don't get season in the injuries, but a lot of times, the the household names are the guys that do everything possible to make sure that they're available. Right. You know, and I was one of those guys that did that. So when I got hurt, it's like everybody was like. How? Wow. How? You know, yeah. like, you know, like how did this happen? Like, like it was just. But you know, then at that moment, I just you know pray to God and just say, can you give, can you give me protection? Just watch over me and allow me to recover. And and I and that I, what was that recovery transition like? Yeah, you know, you know was, mentally, how did you get out of that rut? You want to talk about a? You, you want to talk about a transition that's tough to come out of? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, it, it, you know what. What and it's still we're we're, we're still transitioning, yeah. but but you you, you the, your mental state, the your your heart, the way you carry yourself is is very rare. I think most people would be more negative, more mm -hmm. down, more more not being able to move forward the way that you're moving forward. What? How have you mentally talked yourself through that? What was rehab like? Yes. And, and 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 then maybe dancing at your wedding. You know, mm -hmm. people so, told you you wasn't going to be able to mm -hmm. walk. 
you know, so, like with anybody that's going through something in any type of transition, uh, my rehab and anybody, most majority of people have gotten hurt in some capacity or if you haven't gotten hurt in any way or form of life, you're, you're just living in a bubble, you know, but like, because you can walk on the street and spring your ankle, right. you know, but most people are going through some type of rehab, some type of recovery process and is mine is just like yours, but it's just when you see it, it just seems a lot worse. And obviously, it, it felt terrible, but it was, I just always told myself, hey, Ryan, the only way you're getting through this is looking through to the other side, thinking positive about it. it like Coach Trussell said, if you don't believe you can do something, it's not happening. That's so true. the moment I got hurt, I'm like, hey, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to walk again. I'm going to run again. You know, I'm going to have more kids. And, you know, at the end of the day, you you have scary moments. If you if you never get scared, you're not human, you know. But at the end of the day, I just trust the God, and I push forward. And then every day, I, I try to laugh. I try to enjoy my life because I'm not going to live in a bubble. I'm not going to just be, just because I got hurt. You don't, it doesn't change who you are, you know. But, it, and, but every day wasn't easy. No, yeah. every day wasn't that's, easy you know, at all. That's what you have to understand, yeah. right? You know, Transition, while yeah. you've decided you're yeah. going to have the right attitude and you're yeah. going to have faith and and you believe. That doesn't mean every day. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're gonna have you're gonna have you're some, gonna days. Have some days. You're gonna have some days. You're like, man, I don't know if I want to do this. Right. I don't know if I want to yeah. keep going. Yep. But at the end of the day, that's when you have your family, your your parents, mentors. You talk to those people like, hey, man, like I don't know if I want to do this no more. I don't know if I want to keep rehabbing, man. This is this sucks, and they're gonna. Be, th those are the people that you lean on in the moments that you need them the most. And you be like, hey, this is what you said you wanted. Hey, this is a bad day. All right. Take this day off. All right, let's 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 get back on it tomorrow. You know, and then once tomorrow come, you feel like a different person. Or, you know, sometimes it might take a week, but don't, most people, you just have to, not most people, but you have to just continue to believe in yourself and just continue to just say, hey, I want to continue to get better no matter what I'm going through. It doesn't, even if I can't play football again, even if I can't tackle somebody again, that doesn't define who you are. The person that you are is, is the person that's that's in you every day, the person that you know that laughs, that laughs at the jokes. So you're the people, the person that you're around, the the person that loves everything that you do. It doesn't matter when it comes to sports. It doesn't matter when it comes to coaching. It's it's the who you are away from that. Amen. And I I wanted to continue to be the same person I was playing the game as I was not playing the game. You that, know that's I mean? that's right. my advice that I give to people. Uh, where I'm allowed to be in their life in, in moments of transition. I, I'm always in, you know, we're always in moments of transition. Uh, but when it's my turn, you know, to talk to someone I care about, you know, in that respect, what, what I tell them is, is whatever it took you to be great on the football field, you know, like you were talking about success leaves clues. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's being around uh, President Tressel, you know, now for, for years uh, as a mentor of mine consistently, I, I just I can see why you've been so successful for so long at at helping people win b because of the way that you treat people, the way that you carry yourself, the consistency, the work ethic still at this level well, inspires you, still. me. Still. Perm, he's I'm still, saying I that can't. I'm old. You guys are great. Did you hear that? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you still? Okay. Yeah, I hear him. I hear him. But I tell you what, when Perm named this this podcast the Grindcast, Really, that's a great message. Even if you have the right attitude, even if you believe all these fundamental things we're saying, it's still going to be a grind. Yeah, 100%. You, 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 so you never want someone to It's exhausting to be great. It's exhausting that, to be that's great. That's on my wall downstairs. Yeah. I got that from you. Yep. yep. Can, but, can you talk to us about what that means? Well, like, what, what, what yeah. does it mean it's exhausting to be great? Well, a lot of times we'll want to read a book or listen to a podcast watch a speech or whatever and get the answer that you know oh it's easy I, I got the answer well you might have gotten some good clues you might have gotten some good thoughts but to be great it's a grind it's exhausting you know people talk about they want a good job or whatever i said well do you know how hard those people that make it to med school study yeah i mean it's every day all day it's exhausting yeah to be the best, we were just down at uh, Oak Ridge National Labs, which is uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee, and it's kind of the, the center of, uh, of uh, 
research and development, Department of Energy, Department of Defense. I mean, they're, you know, working on things that 2030, 2040, that we got to be thinking about. And they have their staff meetings at 5.30 in the morning. I said, mm. man, 5.30? I mean, I get up early. But I'm not in a staff meeting at 5.30, <laughs> yeah, right? So what time waking up for that? I, I, I said, I said <laughs> why, why do you get up? So, I mean, why do you meet so early? He said, we have to innovate faster than China can copy. Mm. Mm. It is a grind to stay ahead in the world. So we're going to meet at 5.30. It's exhausting. Now, be you great. think the Steelers-Browns game or the Buckeyes-Wolverines uh, game is a tough one? How about the world scene, the, the, the competition we have in the world now? Because if you don't think— Yeah, U.S. and China if you, versus yeah, uh, yeah. Michigan and Ohio right. State. If you don't think that's a battle, then you, your head's in the sand. And it's a grind. It's exhausting. The only way that freedom, as we understand it, and— Maybe take it for advantage, granted, or whatever. If you don't think that's exhausting, then we're not going to have it. Amen. And so that's the same with transition. We hope no one tuned in for some uh, magic potion. Yeah, take this supplement. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah that, that, <laughs> Drink this every day. You'll be good. You'll be good. No. Good pill. You'll be all right. It's exhausting. I'm, I'm, and, and I'll leave you with this, okay? My last nugget for you. <laughs> Because you do have to believe. You better figure out a good plan. So you better have good parents. You better have good friends. You better have good mentors. You better study things, all that. And we said, you better believe. And here's the first thing I asked our team at Youngstown State to do in 1986. We'd never been national champs. I said, we're going to be the national champs. But we don't have a chance unless you believe. So I want you to memorize this poem. And they're like, oh, man, what this, this, this guy's, come on, what's up oh, with this? Go. Boy, here it's he a poem. goes. Huh? Here you go with you the ready? freestyle yeah. rap. He's freestyle? On it. Yeah. <laughs> Perm, you ready? Somebody yes, said that it couldn't be done. But he with a chuckle replied that maybe it couldn't. But he would be one who wouldn't say so till he tried. So he buckled right in with a trace of a grin on his face if he worried he hit it, and he started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. But it's exhausting. Exhausting. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. But you better believe, and you better have parenting in this. In our society, you talk about a fundamental we better get better at, and that's why I'm proud of you guys, you young parents, that you're going to make sure that they do get the foundation, mm -hmm. that you're going to take responsibility for them. That, it, that they really are a reflection of you. Yep. Not how much money you make, nope. not how much business you have. Your children are a reflection. No doubt. And it's exhausting being great. So, so, so w one more thing to that, because it just made me think of this. So I remember asking you before, like, you know, when you were at, you know, we were going over, scheduling and, and how to put things in your schedule and, and what, what I needed to do, what, you know, just spending time with this one, spending time. And, and I'm like, well, where do you, like, how do I fit that in? Where would you find the time? And that's when you hit me with, it's exhausting to be great. You're like, man, sometimes I would meet, I would have to meet players at midnight to, to, to get time with them. You know, if, if, if I had to, and I'm like, Whoa, I thought I was grinding. <laughs> you know, I had one last night at eight o'clock at night and I'm thinking, you know, I'm like midnight. You know what I mean? It's it's crazy. But you talked about parenting. So in and, and, and you coached through being a parent. You were coaching as you were raising children. You were making moves and transitions in a transition of being a parent. Uh, what 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 tools or tips would you give for someone that because there's there's a price that comes from being uh, the president. There's a price that comes from being the head coach at Ohio State. There's a price that comes from playing at that level or coaching or helping others at that level. What advice would you give for someone to, to be able to parent and play at that level? How can you do that? How can you fulfill that responsibility as a parent and still put in the work that's necessary uh, to win and play at that level? You know, I think most important is your your children have to totally be convinced how much you love them. 
I mean, and that could be spending a lot of time with them or not as much time. But they, they, can, re they can read clues just like you were talking about. If possible, having your children understand what you're doing. So I was fortunate. My kids went K through 12 in Youngstown. Okay, so people asked all the time, well, after all those good seasons, why didn't you guys leave and so forth? And and part of it was, okay. you know what? We had a pretty good situation because mm -hmm. when you're the head coach, I always tell my assistants, when you're the head coach, you can set the meeting times. Mm. And so if my daughter has an orchestra concert or <laughs> a little league game or a volleyball match, or I can set the Jesus. meetings. Yep. Okay, now there are certain things that, you know, during the season and so forth that were hard to so – Making sure, above all else, they know you love them and that you're spending quality time with them. And how do you phrase quality? Sometimes us guys say, well, you know, honey, I, I'm spending quality time. You might not think it's enough or whatever. But it's always got to be in your mind that they are so crucial. But like anything else, what you model is going to be his vibe. My dad was the head football coach at Baldwin Walls College. He was the athletic director, and he was the chairman of the health and phys ed department. It's a lot of hours. That's a lot. That's grind. That's a lot. Right. He was. He was. He was gone, but we lived near on campus. I could see what he was doing. I could see the impact that he was making. And my mom never had a job, so she was committed to us. We were fortunate, and so. Finding that formula, and above all else, though, they got to be able to look into your eyes and know how much you love them. No, you mm -hmm. care. And that's, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the key. Because that's what people don't see. You know, I tell people, all right, you want to play in the NFL, guess when do they play? They play Sundays. Yeah, right. They're preparing Saturdays. Yeah. If you have a trip, if, if you play Jacksonville, you're in Florida on Sundays, you yeah. can't be with the kids yeah. at, at that time. You want to coach at Ohio State, did you ever coach on a weekend? Every game's on yeah. Saturday. Right. Did you ever coach on, did you ever watch films on Sunday at all? We had, we counted it up one time. We had between six and eight weekends off a year. Six and eight weekends off a, a year. year out of fifty-two. Oh, uh. so I mean, it's exhausting it's to be exhausting great. Exhausting to I'm, be great. Yeah, I remember, and, I remember uh, when I when I was playing in, in the prime of my career. I used to wake up at four a.m. Work out. <laughs> this is this used to be my schedule every day. Work out at four, wake up at four. Work out at five. Get to the facility at six. We have meetings at nine. Get to the facility at six. Three hours of film by myself. Then, by yourself. Then we have by yourself. By myself. Three hours of film by yourself. By, did like, did y'all hear that? This with people. That this, <laughs> these are the things people miss. Right. Six right. to nine, yeah. film by yourself. I bet you there was people that wanted your spot. Yeah. That were not doing that. Yeah. Right. How do you let someone that has what you have that that has what you want, and are where you want to be outwork you? Yeah. Then, then, that's that's the stuff see, that like, leaves clues. Like like. Guys are join in like towards the the back end of the nine, you know. So like so, like eight eight, you know, they will get there whatever. But then we have meetings. So the stuff I'm watching is already the stuff we're about to watch as a team. You're already ready. So I'm already ready. Then uh, after we're done around three, I go go normally to like one of my teammates' house who has the therapy at his house. I'll be at his house for two hours. Then I get back home. And work. I mean, then I do a little bit more therapy with my trainer. By the time I get home, it's seven o'clock, and then um, I, I probably get so like an up hour. at four a.m. Back home seven o'clock yeah. p.m. But it, but it might be later. Sometimes it's, eight, sometimes nine. eight nine. But and then if I do get to see, I used to see my son. It would probably be thirty minutes. He go to bed, right back at it the next day. I, I get a little bit of time with him on Fridays and a little bit of time with Michelle on Friday nights, and then Saturday we're gone. And then Sunday is game. And, then Sunday, and, and, and if you play in the Super Bowl, you make that. So, yeah, right. so the season is 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 sixteen weeks. Preseason is five, four, five weeks. Season is eight, uh, so season is actually seventeen weeks. Seventeen weeks. Right. Preseason right. was what four, four or five. Four okay, so there's twenty one weeks. Then you got camp, which is four, oh, a month. Okay, so there's <laughs> twenty five weeks, and then if you make the playoffs, you know there's another eight, four weeks. Four, four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about thirty weeks of mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Where it's nonstop, and then, so that's more than half the year. Yeah. And then the off season, then the off season, you're still grinding. It's a grind. So, you, so uh, normally, I'll get myself 
because I go on this cruise every year. It's called a Buckeye Cruise, and they raise money for cancer. So I'll go on that cruise, and it's the end of February every year. And right after that cruise, that's when I start back working out. So unfortunately, we didn't make it to the Super Bowl. We always made it to right before the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. so that's right at the end of January. So I get a month to kick it, and then March, we're right back at it. Back at it. Back at it. Yeah. Someday see- I'm going to get a job where I got a month to kick it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had that job yet where I get a month to kick it. Man. Hey, no, I know that's a long that's a that's a really long time, but you know, that I put that grind in that's for right. eleven months straight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. with you. So so twelve hours is half a day, by the way. People don't understand that. They say, Oh man, I had to work ten hours a day. I said, Well shoot, twelve is only a half a day. I had ten, a, I had ten. a man tell me, you know, the secret to to being successful is you only have to work half days. Yeah, that's right. You just got to pick which half the day you want to work. That's Twelve right. hours. That's right. You got to put the you got to put it. the you got to put the work in. Put the grind in. I I tell people, you know, f- that are transitioning sometimes into what we do or or have played a sport at a high level. I said, did it always did it come easy to you, or did you have to put work in? Did you did you to be the best? Did you prepare like the best? The, the same type of things that it that it requires to be great. Like I love which I'll never forget what you just said that the the best players on the field there's a reason why they're the best they're they're preparing to be the best it's not an accident these are the ones that are doing the those are what people don't see yeah. they just watch the thing and they think oh he just must have been a beast yeah. they, they, yeah. they think no yeah. it, it's a grind it's right. up and forwards there's a reason why success leaves clues well it's the same stuff that it that it takes to be great at that level in that is the same stuff that it's going to take for you to be great in business mm-hmm. it's it's the same it's the same thing different game but the same, grind. it's the same grind, yeah. same sacrifice, same focus, same type of schedule, same type of commitment, same type, all, all of that stuff. And so, you know, for, for those out there listening, if you're in a transition and you've had a period of your life where you were very successful at something, there's a reason why you were successful, whether it was at ballet or mm-hmm. gymnastics or football or uh, being a doctor, education, whatever it was. At some point, you had to go extremely hard. At some point, you had to make sacrifices. At some point, you had to grind. At some point, there was a lot of that going on to be that great. Okay. And, and so if you can just take that and apply that to everything else that you're about to do, the same results are, are going to happen. There, there was a, there was a, a, a book that I read by uh, Urban Meyer. Uh, above the line have you ever read above the line so i read above the line and and uh the one thing that stands out to me in above the line is e plus r equals o the the event plus your response equals your outcome you know you didn't choose that event you know you couldn't really you know it's like a lot of the events are uncontrollable some of them are within your control you cause that cause and effect there's an event but a lot of times life's transitions Mm -hmm event you can't completely control or or you don't even expect it like there's no way to really prepare to have two boys two kids Mm -hmm. two young kids i mean i could tell you but you got to live it yourself (laughs) you know what i mean so uh pray for my babysitter uh mia tonight she's going to be watching rj (laughs) and lion and and simon and sienna oh she got all four so this will be her you know what i mean she'll enjoy it she's great but this will keep her you know she'll 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 wait to have kids probably you know for a while you know in that but but your event your event that happens you control the outcome by your response the 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 way that you respond Mm -hmm. to to things if you choose a positive response cpr yeah. You got to give yourself CPR. Choose a choose a positive response. You know, you you just you give CPR to that situation, and you have to learn how to respond. We watched Patrick Mahomes sign a half a billion dollar deal. Was it five hundred million or wow. something crazy? But but look how he responded when his team was down. At halftime, mm-hmm. he had no points on the board in the Super Bowl. You get paid that way if you can respond to negative situations. Right. If you can, if you can respond to a hand that you're dealt that's not positive, it's easy to to respond to a hand that you're dealt that's positive. But the the greats, you know, LeBron coming back from down. Uh, three, to three to one in the finals. Mm. So that's how you that's how you become one of the greats. It's 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 you chose that that response Brady I watched him come back against the Atlanta Falcons you know 28 to 3 or 28 to 10 something like that I think he threw an interception one of his first passes of, of one of the Super Bowls I watched it's it's the way that you can respond 
to negative circumstances or transitions that you're handed in life that you are in control of your perspective. You are in control of, uh, of that response that dictates how well you can transition into whatever it is that you're trying to transition into. And it's both things, though, because the event, if it's a good one, how do you respond? Hmm. In fact, success is a, is a bad teacher I, at yeah, times. I, I, yes. I would suggest that it's harder to have the right response to a good event. Mm. I think there's something instinctive oh. and coming off a record month. Yeah. Yeah. Coming off a record coming month. Coming off a record or month. Or signing a half billion dollar contract. Yeah. Now, how do you respond? Yeah. You know, it's okay. You know. And then I have another thing about it. Uh, most people, you're naming out all these great guys, and most people think, Oh man, they're just so talented. They're so special. They they're so gifted. Two of the best people I can name in the NFL right now are not the most talented people. Who? Patrick Mahomes is super talented, but Tom Brady, he was a seven round draft pick, so obviously he didn't have a pedigree. Six, I think. Six, 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 seven. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, when your first I round, I was drafted. When your first you round, track. Well, you, you can say who is track. It doesn't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. But, I'm but, one. But, but Tom Brady. Way is, after me. But Tom Brady is <laughs> considered the greatest, one of the greatest quarterback of all time. No doubt. And then another guy, I'm going to name, he, he's, he's gifted, but Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald's not the fastest. He's not the biggest. He's not the strongest. But he grinds Every single day. You can see his Instagram, and then I actually seen him grind. Doug was just here in the podcast. Yeah. He trains with, with him, with yeah. Aaron Donald. He was just here the yeah. day before yesterday. He told me the same thing. He works super hard. Told me dude's work yeah. ethic yeah. is impeccable. Like, for instance, Clowney, 6'6", 290. I don't know how hard he works, but I know Aaron Donald gets it every single day. He's a short D lineman. He's undersized, but he has three defensive, champ I mean, defensive uh, MVPs, and he literally can't be blocked. Can't be blocked at all. Yep. And he's but an nobody knows how to stop him. And he he's a guy that doesn't have all the all the all the pedigree. Another guy, Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown, he's not the fastest. He's not the biggest. He's not the strongest. But you can't guard him. You know, and and all I'm saying is some of these guys, they might have different paths, but all I'm saying is to be great at something, it takes a grind and it also takes Getting getting used to be doing the boring stuff. Mm -hmm. This Amen. is what this is what a lot of people do. this is what a lot of people don't understand about greats. They're they're used to doing the boring stuff. They're used to getting used to a routine because most people when they get into a routine they're like, man, this is boring. This isn't fun. I want to do something else. If it works, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Come right. on, say it right. again. No, no, run that no, back. No, no. Woo. You know, I wasn't with you long enough to teach you this one. Uh -oh. If it ain't broke. Break it and make it better. <laughs> no, no, one hundred percent right. Uh, all right, all right. just wanted to make sure. No, no, we no, don't ever say if it ain't no, broke. Bro, no, 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 no. I mean, no, 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 yeah, I, know, yeah, I know what you mean. Okay, I know what you right. mean. But all I'm saying is, some of these guys understand. Like, hey, this is the grind that I have. Yeah. Waking up at four a.m. sucks. It's boring. Yeah, man, nobody else is in the gym. I have nobody to talk to. But if waking up at four a.m. works. Keep doing it. Don't come in at eight because you can talk to everybody. Right. right. You know, mm -hmm. and doing that's the what, boing stuff. Doing the boring doing stuff. Doing the stuff that's not fun. Doing Fundamentals the, aren't fun. Yeah. One of the, the best lines I ever heard was the people that succeed do the things that failures aren't willing to do. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Think about it. Yes. It doesn't mean they're more talented, like your your point. Yeah. Doesn't mean they do Aaron the Donald's things that Failures, failures are not willing, willing to, to do. do. So you Aaron to, Donald so you have to is fail willing, to get back up. willing to do the things that people that aren't as good as him aren't willing to do. I remember. I remember. Uh, there was a few times I was in, in uh, work uh, watching film. You guys were like, "Man, how early are you in here?" I'm at six. And I was like, "Y'all can come. I'm not tripping because I'm, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to be there." Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, "All right, y'all yeah, come." Two or three of them come about six six thirty. Go there for one day yeah, and right, gone, right. and that's like, man, I, I I can't get up that early. I'm like, why not? They're like, man, I, I just go to sleep too late, and, and you know, and I say, man, Come on. and I was like, man, you're right. But the thing is, like, I go to sleep late and I still get here. If I go to sleep late, I'm still getting here. You know, at the day, like, how bad you want it? Some guys say, hey, a lot of football players, some of them love the game and some of them want money. If you really want the money, working leads to money. <laughs> you know, and, and and be honest, it's like a lot of guys like, hey, I want to. I want the Lamborghinis. I want this. I want that. You have to grind to get that. You can't just 
oh, just go out Amen. there and play football and think you're the best guy. I'm not I'm not understanding and catching all these picks because I'm lucky. Lucky hard work leads to luck. No so doubt. So let's get back to Simon. How, how did you feel when he changed and told you that he wasn't a Stiller fan? Uh, you, hey man, you, you don't want to. You like, and like, Coach, oh, y'all love killing that. me. Yeah, man, it, it, it really hurt my. It really hurt my heart because this is this is the thing that that threw me off. <laughs> it really hurt your heart. Hurt I saw heart. it in his <laughs> face. Did it? I <laughs> thought he thought <laughs> less of me after this, that. This is what hurt my heart because the thing is, he doesn't tell anybody he's no. a Browns fan. <laughs> He doesn't say it. He's silent. He's silent. He's a silent Browns fan. But then when somebody say, hey, who's your team? He's like, oh, I'm a Browns fan. But he's not going to be like, oh, I'm a Browns fan. You know, like, he doesn't wear any Browns stuff. He doesn't wear it? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I do. I wear it here (laughs) once in a while. When he crosses the state line (laughs) into Ohio, he he goes in his trunk and he changes his clothes. That's it. I keep it in the trunk. I haven't seen Simon wear one thing, orange or brown. No, okay. one thing. Where do you see uh, what I wear today? Where do you <laughs> see? I'm buying a whole brand new. Just wait till I show up now for this. I'm I'm rocking it for like a week straight now after this. So 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 he said what so what'd you say, Perm? What went through his mind? Yeah. Yeah. What went through your mind when you find that out? Like, no, I was just, I was just I was just disgusted, man. Just, 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 just disgusted. Didn't, didn't want to be his friend anymore. Just nah, like, I, I, you know, and they you know, people this is the thing with me. Like when, when when I find out people are fans of a now, team, do you have Stiller stuff all around the house? Yeah, I definitely have okay. Stiller stuff. I, yeah. he still and then he, but he he told me, yeah, I know he has Stiller stuff in the house. You know, Nat- Natalie runs the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> No Steelers gears up in my house. I said I'd never have a Steelers jersey on that wall unless but, it was yours. Yeah, he, he said that. He or said perms. That. He said that. He said that. No, so I appreciate that. But the one thing that I'm cool with is a lot of people. I don't. I don't. I don't get mad at them for being a fan of a certain team because you were a fan of that team before I met you or before I was even born. You know, and some people are fighting over and and you know just mad at each other about who they care about, but. Man, I grew up here. This is where I'm from. Mm-hmm. You know, this is who I support. You know, so I don't I don't really get I told mad about Ryan it. that look at how loyal I am to be in Pittsburgh, to marry a Pittsburgh woman, to be around your Pittsburgh self, and to be a Pittsburgh uh, uh, or to be a Cleveland Browns fan takes a lot of loyalty. But he's like a lot a, of losing seasons. Like back a, to back like, years, we I think we didn't win a game. He's like a double agent. Still though. a Browns fan. Oh, look at you. Like okay, let's go. Agent, Gloves he, he, are off. Let's go. He, went, look, he got black on right now. Black. So yeah. he, I wear black. He, he wear yellow sometimes, too. Oh, so. He, so so more yellow than brown. And more yellow no than Steelers brown. No Steelers gear, though. <laughs> more yellow than brown. Coach is, a, coach is a Browns fan, too. Yeah. No, but, but here's, You're letting here's me get the jumped right, over he's here. Saying here's the difference. <laughs> this is what I get jumped everywhere <laughs> I go when it comes to this stuff. People ask me all the time, who's your favorite NFL team? Well, it's wherever my guys are playing. Boom. Okay. Yes. But... I grew up in Cleveland. Yeah, that makes and sense. And the Browns are my favorite team. But as soon as I have, like, I have Steelers stuff in my man yeah. cave. I have a picture of Santonio catching the yeah. Super Bowl it. touchdown. Makes sense. I got pictures of Cam, you know, that he signed and that kind of thing. I don't have a it's picture like of Ryan that. that he signed. But anyway, you know, <laughs> Ryan left me, <laughs> hey, left uh, me uh, hanging. Uh, uh, come on, but, man. But, All right, I'm going to be up in Youngstown tonight. <laughs> so, <I'm not> <laughs> so, but I'm for whoever my guys are playing yeah. for. Absolutely, but my, my generic team <laughs> is the Browns. Now, <laughs> this looks like your generic team's the Bengals. <laughs> this is red and black. That looks like this orange is and black. City yeah, black and red. Right that here. looks like orange and black. Looks like this Bengals. Is, this is black and <laughs> red. And that's it. Hey man, I don't know. Like, if he was a Browns fan, red. If he was a Browns fan, there'd have been Browns. It'd have been Browns somewhere. Why did I open this up? Why did I? Why did I open this up? I don't see no Browns stuff. Why did I open this up to myself? Oh man. See how they do me, Perm? Wow. What po- what position would you put Perm at right now? Nose tackle. No. no. <laughs> Free safety. For sure. Free, sa- Free safety. Free safety. Because Perm always has the whole field in front of him. Boom. Perm yeah. knows what's going on all over the field. Yeah. Yeah. So he need- would get us lined up. And we, I'd yep. have them at free. I, I watched I, I, Perm take a shot this this week. Remember, you were with us. We, we went oh, yeah. to Perm. Perm looked like he got shot in his calf. Yeah. He looked like he got. What? There's a hole yeah. in his leg, like this. Yeah, yeah. It was a seat a, buckle. It was a, a seat a buckle, buckle that got, the buckle was off. 
You yeah. know, like when you buckle that, he got oh, popped, yeah. and we were traveling, and we looked like he got shot. I got yeah, it back, yeah. and this thing yeah, caught me. It, it stuck him. into my wow. leg. Yeah. I thought like it should have been sta- like most people would have fell on the floor. Like straight. I was gonna say, it didn't affect him. He passed him. it up. No. It just no, kept, we kept going. Kept, I said, like Perl, I had to force him to go get butterfly. Th- I'm yeah. like, dude, there's a hole in your leg. Yeah. I had to oh, force him to. No, he wouldn't go. He said, I'm good. He put the thing on the thing, and he's been he's been running ever since. You know why? Why? Why town? He spent time in Why Town. Yeah. Youngstown tough. Yes, sir. That's right. Yep. That's right. I appreciate you guys uh, and your time coming Absolutely. on coming on the grind cast. Both of you mean so much to me. Uh, I'm grateful that you introduced me to to Ryan. Ryan, you become a great friend friend to me, man. You're an unbelievable person. Um, we got some things shaking and, and moving. Stay tuned. We got uh, print labs coming a couple mm-hmm. months. Uh, we got our printing company. Uh, we got some real estate. Yep. Company up and popping right now, uh, and Coach, you. I'm gonna have you, to ask for a loan. For you. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> loan in a bit. I need a loan. <laughs> Man. I tell you, Damn. you know where you know, you know you know when, Bentley's, Porsches. I'm, I'm over here tripping I need a loan up in my from you. Cherokee. Yeah, my, 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 my Porsche about ten years old now. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> now we like that brown. Well, how is it brown? It's not brown. It's gold. Ah, uh, but it looks brown though. It's, uh, oh. it's a not gold. It looks yeah. brown though. Hey, first of all, Michelle picked that color. Okay. <laughs> she wanted to match cars. All, I had it was blue at first. Her oh. Michelle's Puerto Rican, hundred percent buddy. Yeah, blue. Buddy. Blue. 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 Like yeah. You can't be having nah, stuff was, that's blue. It was sky blue. Okay. Como right. está? That's yeah, so you blue. so so you know Spanish a lot now. Um, like, no, like uh, what do you know? <laughs> Because uh, he no said hablo something Spanish. Espanol. No, <laughs> no, I, mine was Latin. Latin. I'm mine sorry, Latin. Latin. I'm sorry, Latin. Yeah, no hablo español. So you don't speak no English. No I'm Spanish. Espan- yeah, español. Yeah, Spanish. There you go, Spanish. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got Duolingo. You know. <laughs> I love it, Tra- Coach. Coach, you, 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 you've meant so much to me and mentored me over these last years. I, I literally, I don't think that I would be uh, the the father I am right now. I try to do my best. You know, I, I don't think that our business would have had a record month this month uh, if it weren't for the impact that you've made in in, in my life. Just those couple hours that we get together, uh, I try to not ever waste your time you know um i I try to always take notes you know i I got like a book of stuff i feel like you know i could put together from the things that you've shared with me and impacted me and uh so so many people i introduced uh, tristan today you know he's 21 he's killing it in our business and you know i said indirectly i wanted him to meet you because it's indirectly uh, you've impacted him so yeah. much because so much of what you've given to me, I've been able to give to That's him, awesome. and so much that that he gives me credit for learning. I've I've learned from you over the last few years. So I just want to thank you. Even today, we're here Saturday. Yeah, you know, Saturday morning, and and you didn't have to do this, Ryan. You know, you didn't have to do this, and and uh, to, to drive all the way up here, you know, in the rain on a weekend. You're already working. You're already grinding. You're going through COVID nineteen yeah. as a president of, of Youngstown State. I don't have so COVID. Don't start here. rumors. <laughs> I, don't start, don't start rumors. <laughs> I don't have COVID. Just so everyone out there knows, <laughs> at least right now, I don't. You never know, That's day it. by day. Come on. Day by day. But thank you. All right. Thanks, I pre- Jim. appreciate Love you, you guys. Thank you Thanks guys. for joining right, us on another Thanks, episode of the Grindcast. Get ready. It's a new day. Count money, man. Money, Stack man. riches. Trying to told him I'm a beast, bud. Come on. Come on.